What is going on everybody, Mike here. Today we're talking about my review of the iPad mini 6 after 30 days, how good is it? Maybe I think how bad is it? Probably the better question. What do we think about jelly scrolling and really is it a big deal and who should buy it? Let's get started. So today's video will not necessarily be a deep dive into the specs, those you could find on Apple's product page and I don't think that's why you're here. We're really gonna talk about experiences and what it's like to use this device over the past 30 days because on day one to day 30, my opinion of this device has changed and over the course of time, my opinion is gonna change and that's really what's important and that's I think why you're here. And that's because you should really never buy something based on purely specifications of what a device is. It's really about experience and you get that experience by proximity to the device and using it for a consistent amount of time. Now, when I first purchased the iPad mini, I thought I was going to use this as a device and it was gonna take away some of the low hanging fruit from my iPad Pro or even my Mac and I would use it kind of as a supplementary device sitting on my couch, browsing Twitter, you know, surfing the internet. Boy, was I wrong. Because not only did my usage patterns on my iPad Pro and my Mac remain intact, and this actually ate into usage from my iPhone 13 Pro Max, which was completely unexpected. I wanna choose what device I'm gonna use for a task based on the context that I find myself in and how much time I have for that given task. If I have less than a few minutes, I'm probably gonna use my iPhone because that's the device that requires the less amount of effort. It has a less amount of resistance with me using a device. It's usually in my pocket and it is relatively simple to use. Anything more than maybe five, 10, 15 minutes tops, I'm probably not gonna use the iPhone. I'm gonna go to my iPad Pro. Well, there are times where I expect to use my iPhone for a given task, and I'm compelled to pick up the iPad mini because of the large display, and it's just such an immersive device where this type of usage was just unexpected. Where I thought I was gonna use the iPad mini, again, as a device to sit on the couch, maybe use it to relax, surf the internet, do things that are lean back content consumption, I was actually using this in a much more different way. There are things that I'm going to use my iPad mini 6, which just feel a little bit more natural on the iPad mini 6 than using the iPhone. Since the screen on the iPad mini 6 is much larger than my iPhone, and it's much more immersive at 8.3 inches, there's less friction with using the iPad mini 6 then actually going to a device that is larger like the iPad Air, the iPad Pro, whatever the device, I find myself more compelled to pick up the iPad mini than I do for one of those other devices or even the smaller iPhone, which again, this is strange because this is something that I wasn't expecting. Let's talk about the things that I do not like about the iPad mini 6. Now, after using this device for the last 30 days, I can honestly say there's really only about a handful of things that I don't like about the iPad mini 6, if that, and they're gonna be specific to how I use the device though I imagine anyone after using this device for any period of time would come to the same conclusions. Now I set up the iPad mini 6 to unlock using both my pointer fingers on my left and right hand. That's because the device itself, I tend to use it in landscape mode. And when I do, I wanna make sure that I'm covered from either way. Well, oftentimes it feels too mechanical to where it's almost unnatural to place my finger on the sensor itself and then wait a few seconds for it to open. Well, new in iPad OS 15.1, there's an accessibility feature and I actually don't think it existed in iPadOS prior to 15.1, but you basically push down on the sensor and it unlocks the device and then brings you into whatever screen that you're on. Otherwise, you have to use the device almost two-handed, one finger to place on that Touch ID sensor and then another finger to swipe up. I'm all about single-handed use. And again, this is a device that is really designed for single-handed use for, I would say, for majority of people. Second, it's these wonky volume rockers. Since the physical size of the device is relatively small in comparison to the next closest iPad and the fact that the iPad mini supports the newer, faster Apple Pencil 2 with magnetic charging here along the side, the placement of the volume rocker is somewhat confusing because it doesn't behave the same way based on the device orientation. Hold the device in landscape mode and the Apple Pencil at the top, the volume rockers behave as you would expect. The upper button raises the volume and the lower button does the opposite. But if you turn the device 180 degrees, the buttons behave completely opposite of what you would think, making it intuitive, but not instinctive. And it's not a deal breaker by any means, but it is something to keep in mind because you have to unwind the behavior of using a device that functions exactly the same, no matter the orientation. And last but not least, there is the padding that you see here on the iPad, whether it's in landscape mode, there just seems to be a lot of additional space that you can use here. Now, if you look, obviously along the bottom, I have a very limited dock. I don't have all the, my apps that I normally use inside of the dock, nor do I have large app icons, but that doesn't change the content that dramatically. It does look a little weird. Even the small widget sizes look very, very small. And if you compare that against the widget sizes on the iPhone, they're even smaller than that. So that's just a little bit annoying. So keep in mind, if you're thinking about getting this, that you gotta make sure that you have good eyesight. Now, one of the things that I do to combat this is that I use per app dynamic text sizing 
and that little bit flexibility with the size of text that is displayed in the apps and in also within this iOS system. Now let's shift gears to talk about things that I do like about the iPad mini because spoiler alert, it is probably my favorite device to use right now about all the devices that I have. This is the most portable device I've had in a very long time. It goes with me everywhere and it's coming with me and I'm using it as a, an additional device in lieu of my iPhone when I think really just need a bigger screen, but it's a little bit more than that. I'll get into that in just a minute. I actually feel so strongly about the portability of the device that I went to the store and I exchanged the Wi-Fi only version that I had for the 5G version because I stick it in my man bag or my satchel, whatever you want to call it. And it really is just so portable and the screen is so big, immersive, that it gives a really, I think, a differentiated experience that I certainly was not expecting, which is kind of surprising. It's the first device that I pick up in the morning after turning off my alarm on my iPhone. And it's the last device that I use before going to sleep because it's, sorry, because it's so immersive, the screen is so big, and it's really just a pleasure to use uh, in comparison to larger size iPad devices. Now, part of that immersion is from the uniform bezels that you see on the device. So the uniform bezels go all the way around the device and it really makes it very easy to hold one-handed. So if I'm holding this here, by the way, what do you think about that sticker? I like it. It gives my hands just enough room to, you know, to have my thumb here on the side and brace it and it feels good in the hand. Now, I don't necessarily have big hands. I can hold it one-handed. It's just a pleasure to hold and a pleasure to use. This device itself is much more conformable to everyday scenarios where I thought my iPhone would kind of reign supreme in those use cases. Now let's talk about the display and really whether or not jelly scrolling is something that I notice. Now I've seen it once and once you see it once you can see it many, many times. It only happens to me in portrait mode like the device is right now. I only happen to see it on web pages. I don't see it in apps or at least I haven't noticed it in apps. I would tell you that if you think that you're gonna be impacted or you'll have some sensitivity to this, I would go to the store and check it out in person. For me, I notice it, I give it to my wife, she didn't notice it, I give it to my father-in-law, he didn't notice it. So I think it really depends on your individual calibration and this type of behavior. But I, again, I would say that if you think that you're gonna be sensitive to this, go to the store, check it out in person. For me, it's not a big deal. I'm not expecting this display that costs $499 to have extra high fidelity where it's like, you know, a Pro Display XDR. Uh, that's not my expectation. And for me, it's not really a big deal at all. Now this probably has you wondering, is the iPad mini 6 capable of doing real work? Because when you look at it in comparison to the iPad 9th generation, the iPad Air, the iPad Pro, it has much smaller screen. Now the answer to that is a resounding yes, it certainly is capable, but the caveat is depending on one, how you define real work, and two, what your appetite for complexity is. Now the iPad mini 6 is certainly capable of sending and receiving emails, you know, communicating with loved ones, processing your inbox, taking notes, reminders, all that stuff. And that's really what I would think about is core basic functionality. And no matter which iPad you choose, all that core functionality is gonna function exactly the same on all the different iPads. What you are getting as you move up the ladder in different iPads is you're exchanging kind of broad capabilities for something that's very hyper-specific that that iPad model is capable of. For example, the iPad mini is very good at portability because it is so small. The iPad Pro is very good at watching HDR content because of the type of screen that it has. It's very good at doing hyper-specific tasks that these iPads, which are lower priced, are not capable of. Meaning that the iPad mini excels at portability and conformability compared to the cheaper, larger 10.2 inch ninth generation iPad because this is smaller. You are paying for, when you buy the iPad mini, is size and portability in comparison to all the other iPads. In terms of appetite for complexity, because the iPad mini does not have the smart dock connector on the back, you can't use a first party keyboard made by Apple. And there are a ton of different keyboards on the market, but none of them are very good. I'm in the process of building my favorite accessories for the iPad mini. So if that is something that you're interested in. Make sure you click subscribe because that video is gonna be coming out next. It is decision time whether or not you are gonna purchase the iPad mini six. And I honestly think that this is the best iPad that most people should start with in terms of their decision process. And I'll explain why. Now, I know what you're saying, Mike, the $329 iPad, ninth generation, is cheaper. I'm not saying that price is not an important component of making a purchase, but I am saying when you shop on price alone, you end up losing out on experience and value. When you look at the iPad mini in comparison to all the other non-pro iPads, so this one has the newest processor compared to the iPad ninth generation, which is the A13, and the iPad Air 4, which is gonna be the A14. This has the same rear camera as the iPad Air 4, but it also combines the same front camera as the iPad 9th generation. So you get the best of both worlds on this device with the front camera and the rear camera. So if you're using this, maybe to take pictures, maybe to take video, if you're using this for video calls, you're gonna get better quality images on the front facing camera here 
as you would on the next generation iPad, but also better rear facing images on the back of this iPad in comparison to the iPad Air 4. This and the iPad next generation support center stage means it's that technology where it will automatically frame you in the center of the photo. And as people are added or removed from the frame, it'll change that framing, which is a really great technology, especially if you might be doing a lot of video calls with this device. Now, the display technology that you see here on this iPad is as good as the iPad Air 4, and it's better than the iPad 9th generation. The iPad 9th generation is really just a distraction, I think, to get you in the door and to look at the device. And again, if you're shopping on price, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not where I would start based on value. You're also getting USB-C 3.1, which is really gonna give you more flexibility if you ever plan to use a device for any type of data transfer. It's way better than Lightning, way faster than Lightning, and it gives you, again, more flexibility. And while your decision to choose the iPad Mini 6 over the iPad 9th generation is more expensive, it's $170, when you take the total purchase price of that device, either at $330 or $499, and divide that by, you know, conservatively speaking, you'll own the device for four years, that works out to be 34 cents a day for the iPad Mini 6, versus 23 cents a day for the iPad 9th generation. So 10 cents a day to own something that is more portable, more conformable to many use cases, and it gives you at least the applicability of using it in different use cases where you might not have that because of the size of the iPad 9th generation. Also, this has 5G, which is the way that I bought it, and I think this device deserves to have 5G because it is really meant to be a portable device that you keep with you. I really put it in my man bag every day, my satchel, whatever you want to call it, and I carry this device with me every day. It really goes with me everywhere. Now, I want to know what you think. Are you thinking about purchasing the iPad Mini 6? If you are, what size and configuration are you thinking about getting? Is my recommendation of getting the iPad Mini 6 not really something that rings with you? Let me know down in the comments below. My name is Mike, and if you're looking for another video with maybe iPad accessories, I'll put one right over here somewhere for you to go ahead and check out and make sure you're subscribed for that iPad Mini 6 accessory video, which will be dropping soon. Talk to you in the next one.